In order to determine the optimal time to fire depth charges, you will need to use the Tactical Range Recorder, TRR for short. This clever device requires you to input destroyer speed and target depth by using this pointer and placing in, in the correct position on the scale. The vertical lines represent destroyer speed in knots, while the horizontal lines refer to the sinking time of depth charges in seconds. In order to set the TRR right, you need to know the speed of the destroyer, left hand side of the screen, and the current depth of the U-boat, given by the sonar man. Once you get to know these two variables, set the pointer vertically, depth, and horizontally, destroyer speed, so that it matches the actual data. Please note the reminder above the scale that gives the sinking time for shallow, medium, and deep. The graph drawn by the TRR is a time range plot, and the angle of the graph translates to the so-called range rate, which is the speed of closing the distance to the target. The easiest way to think about it is to treat it as a coordinate system where the x-axis represents distance and the y-axis represents time. Therefore, as you close the distance, you will observe that the graph starts leaning to the left. The faster you approach the target, the more heavily it will lean. If you start going away from the target, it will start leaning right and will be completely vertical if you keep the same distance. You do not need to calculate the exact U-boat speed, as it is inherent in the range rate. Now, if you set everything right on the scale, you need to rotate the plotter bar to match the angle of the graph. Use the red lines to help you. In the TRR view, you can zoom in and scroll the camera around just as you can in the DRT and OSC view. This way, you can apply settings very precisely, and you should also attempt to align the plotter bar with the graph as precisely as you can. I can actually share a recommendation from uh, an authentic US Navy Sonarman handbook, which advises the operator to tilt their head while aligning the plotter bar with the graph. Therefore, try being as precise as you can, but at the same time remember that while the TRR can give you the optimal time to fire, it does not solve the problem of where you need to be to hit. Therefore, make sure to steer in a way that will allow you to end up in front of the U-boat's bow, because the only parameter that the TRR will give you is the optimal time to fire. You still need to be at the right location to make it work. The three icons on the left allow you to load and arm, and also rearm, your depth charges for the given depth. If you click once, you will notice the icon fill up, which represents the time the depth charge crew needs to load and arm the depth charges. Once the barrage is ready to fire, you will notice that the icon has changed to, to represent that. If the U-boat changes depth, you can rearm the barrage for a different depth, which also requires some time albeit much less than loading. At this point, it is worth mentioning how you should go about the whole attack procedure, because it requires the combined effort of combat, bridge, and sonar to carry out the attack. Combat allows you to process spatial data, sonar deals with the time of the attack, and the bridge allows you to steer precisely. Switching between these three problem areas may seem daunting at first, but it's really a matter of giving yourself enough time to come up with a plan, and then executing it step by step. First, analyze contact maneuvers in combat and build a mental picture of how you want to attack. Then, set the TRR. Don't leave it for last, because you won't be able to make it especially when com coming in fast. After you set the TRR, you can start your approach. During the approach, switch between combat and bridge to make sure that everything is going as planned and apply corrections whenever necessary. When the time to fire draws near, a pop-up window with a TRR camera will, will remind you that it is time to take a look at the TRR one last time and apply final corrections before firing. Now that you know everything you should know, let's be honest. Sinking the U-boat will not be an easy job, because, quite often, the U-boat captain will dodge your attack at the very last moment, just when, or after, you have lost sonar contact. This is a tough nut to crack, and requires everything I spoke about earlier, that is, the coordination between bridge, 
combat and sonar. The attack sequence will often test your intuition, will require a little bit of guesswork and sometimes even luck. Consequently, it may take you weeks, if not longer, before you manage to score a kill or even damage the U-boat. If you manage to pull it off, however, the level of satisfaction will go through the roof. Also, the U-boat won't be able to dodge your attacks indefinitely. Keep practicing, repeat your attacks, and sooner or later you will catch it off guard. Also, remember your mission. You do not win the game just by sinking the U-boat. Your job is to make sure that none of the cargo ships get sunk. So, as long as you finish the demo with no ships lost, you're a winner.